Well, peace and blessings once again. It's your boy, Mr. Wild and Free, and we'll be diving into the music OS with a little bit more depth. Today, we'll be covering the records database. Let's get into it. All right, so as you can see here, these are the current versions of the music OS operating system. We have the simple dash, which has the records and the albums database. We have the music OS, which has both of those as well as the artist, the word bank, and the audio plugins databases. And then for an upcoming version with Music OS Plus, we will be adding on the music tags, the gear, and the tech stack. So look forward to seeing that one in the near future. Let's go ahead and talk about the records database. So just above, we have a mermaid flowchart showing the relationships between the databases that currently exist in this version of the template. This one is very straightforward because these are the two databases that are included in the simple dash. So let's go ahead and hop into the records database. Now, as we can see right off the bat, we have three songs in here, but we will be going over each and every one of these properties just so that you're familiar with what they are as you move into this system. So right off the bat, let's start with this first one. We'll expand this just so you can see that this is the done column. This just allows us to check this off to let us know that we have actually completed this song. And this helps when we're moving into different views or if we want to filter for songs that are actually completed. Moving right along, the next one is for your track number. Right after that, we have the actual track title, which is the title property of this record, which allows you to hop into the page itself. Right next to that, we have a multi-select property for your artists. This is for the simplified version of this template. But if you want to get more sophisticated sophisticated with your setup, let's say you do have other properties you wish to define for artists you collaborate with, then you can look at the Music OS system, which actually has a full database to keep track of your artists. Right next to that, we have the status property. You can configure this however you like. The ones that I have identified initially for this database are ideas, drafts, moving, meaning that the song has actually been recorded, finished, meaning that the song has been completed, meaning post production is done. Album pick means that it has been selected for the album. Single ready means that it is a single which will be selected from a body of work. And then onto the completed section we have your released and then we have scheduled for release. You're absolutely welcome to add or change any of these properties once you dive into this workspace. Right after that, we have release dates for your song. Select the date when you wish to release the project or when it has actually been released. Right after that, we have the length of the track. So we can define the length of the track here. I left it as a traditional text property because I wanted to include the colon and you know, if there's any complexity that you want, maybe you wanna add min dot or second dot, you have the flexibility to do so but you're able to change this property however you like as well. Right along, we have the producers column, which is another multi-select property. Now in the music OS version of this records database, you can actually relate this to your artist database as well. And then that way you have a database of your artists and producers, and then you can have two different relational properties that point back to whether they're the producer for this particular track or they were an artist on this particular track. Moving right along, we have the BPM or the beats per minute. These are metrics around your song that are helpful to know at a glance. This could be helpful, let's say, if you're working with a manager or a music a &R or a music supervisor and they need to know these metrics about your song. This is what this whole next section is about. It helps you to make sure that you have all of this metadata tracked and easily accessible for all of your music. So there it is, we have the BPM. Right next to that, we have the key of the song followed by the time signature. And then of course you have a multi-select property for the mastering engineer of this song. Again, on the music OS and future versions of this template, you'll actually have access to linking the master engineer property to the artist database, or you're fully welcome to customize your own artist database and relate it to this property, just like you would with your music producer or your artist properties here in this record database. Moving right along, we have the genre property. And I have a couple of predefined genres here that should cover a good scope. However, you're welcome to 
add any additional and customize this property just like any of the other properties to your liking once you have this set up in your own workspace. You can also rearrange the order if that benefits you as well. Say you're primarily an R&B and soul artist, you can just go ahead and drag that up there. So that makes it easy for you to navigate and make sense of this workspace as much as you want. Right next to that, we have the relation property to our album. And from here, you can select what album this song actually exists on. We will be going in depth into the album database a bit more on the next video. So be sure to tune into that. I'll make sure that I come back and drop a link to that below or have it linked in one of these little corners here that you see. Moving right along, we have the catalog number. So the catalog number represents what number body of work this is for you. So for instance, within my own discography, this album represents the 10th body of work that I have actually released. Likewise, this body of work represents the 11th project that I have released out of my total discography. So that's what your catalog number represents. Right next to that, we have the album UPC, which is your universal product code for your album. If you have distributed your songs or your albums on a distribution platform like DistroKid or TuneCore, CD Baby, or any of these, then normally you are provided with a UPC code just like this that you can use to make sure you're keeping track of your product as it's being sold throughout various digital or physical marketplaces. So that code is what this property is meant to capture. So now you have a property within your database that can allow you to easily reference that code if you ever need it. And then following right along, you have the total number of tracks for this particular album or project. Right after that, we have the number of discs. This is something that was a bit more prevalent back in the day. However, you do still see albums being released in a digital format that come in a pseudo disc one, disc two kind of format, which allows the artist to articulate two halves of the story or to give a bit of juxtaposition to two sides of their project or more. Although we see less of this as we've been progressing through this digital era. Nevertheless, if you need to keep track of that, here's the property right in this database to make it easy for you. And right after that, we have the song description property, which allows us to basically type in a quick description of our song, which is helpful if we're ever going to pitch any of these individual songs to any marketing opportunities or to a playlist opportunity. You now have a quick reference to the description of your song whenever you need it. And for the next property, we have a link property for the play length. So for this particular property, I personally like to add a song.link or any similar platform that allows you to quickly navigate to all of the options of a song's streaming platform. So if somebody clicks on it, they can navigate to Spotify or YouTube Music or Apple Music. And that just makes it easier so that people can go directly to the platforms that they're already accustomed to. So that's what I like to add here to the play link. And moving right on down this line, let's just go ahead and pop in another link here as an example. This buy link would effectively be the same as the previous, except this is where you can navigate people to where they can purchase your song or your album. So that's what this property is for, plain and simple. Just after that, we have your ISRC, which is your International Standard Recording Code. This is a code distributed by the RIAA, which is the Recording Industries Association of America, which of effectively identifies each one of your songs independently. You can think of your UPC as your basket code and then this ISRC would be the individual items inside of that basket. And the basket code would be something associated with an album or an EP or if you did a solo release that would also have a UPC code and then each one of those songs inside of that album or EP would have their independent ISRC code. Now if you're a music artist and you've already been releasing music, you're already familiar with this property, I don't have to go into too much depth, but basically it's just a means of identifying your individual songs. On to the next one, we have your SoundCloud ID number. This is something that was more prevalent for me back in the day. I used to use SoundCloud a bit more than I do now. However, if you ever need to keep track of your SoundCloud ID number for each of the songs that you upload there, you can paste that here inside of this property. 
This helped me when I was actually uploading music to my website using a custom embed code that allowed me to use SoundCloud to stream music through my website. And what I would do is I would take each of these songs and I would put them into a CMS, which is a content management system, much like what Notion can be for your operations. Nevertheless, I would take this code and put it inside of my CMS for my records, and then I would dynamically inject each of those SoundCloud IDs to make it so that whichever song had that embed code, it would play the proper song associated with it. So that's a bit of a nuanced take on how you could take advantage of this SoundCloud ID and why you might want a quick reference property for something like that. However, if it's not something that you feel like you need, you can go ahead and eliminate this property column or keep track of it just in case you have others working on your team that would need access to this information. And right on next to that, we have the composer property. And this here just allows us to identify the composers with the proper formatting as it pertains to your PROs and everything else. So as you can see in this particular cell, I have my name right next to that in parentheses, I have 100% and then a comma and then my associated PRO, which is BMI. This is effectively the format you would take. And if you have multiple parties on a song, then you would separate it with a semicolon at the end of your PRO. So here you can see I have another collaborator, 50% for them, their associated PRO, a semicolon, and then another space for my name in parentheses, the percentage of which I contributed to the composition, comma, and then my PRO. So that's the format you would want to take for your composer property. That way, whenever you need to put this information elsewhere it's already ready to go for you all right following right along we have a roll-up property for your album stage this lets you know at a glance as you're looking through your records database what is the stage of this particular album that you're working with is it already released is it completed is it moving this is where you get to see that information at a glance from your records database Right next to that, we have credits. Usually you can have additional credits associated with a song. So here's where you could input that information on your records database. Next, we have your label name and you can add in whatever your label name is here. As an example, I have a Wild and Free World LLC. However, you can go in and add whatever that is. And if you're working with multiple labels, then you have that multi-select property to give you that flexibility. And next up, we have the package type select property and you can identify here whether it will be packaged on an album, an EP, a mixtape, as a single or as a part of a compilation. And if there's any other format that you might wish to add, by all means, go ahead and add that into this property. If you feel that there are some that don't apply, go ahead and remove those. Right after that, we have the URL slug property. This is also helpful if you are working with a content management system on a website where you might need to reference a particular page that is dedicated to that asset or that piece of content in that CMS. So that's what this property is for. It's helpful if you're working with dynamic content and needing to reference the slug of the URL to actually access a particular piece of content. For an example, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you what a slug is. A slug would be anything after the main domain. So you have like a slash song dash name, that would be your slug for that particular record. Cool, moving right along, we have the grouping. And this is effectively a format that allows you to capture all of the information as it pertains to the legal information surrounding this song. So you can have the record label or the business who owns this particular asset or this song and then you have the email associated with their contact and then you also have their breakdown of their master and the publishing control so whether or not they own hundred percent of the master and hundred percent of the publishing or if there's some percentage breakdown you would identify that here and then of course you can replicate that format for any additional artists so this would be the property where you can have that information written out ready to go if anybody ever needs did access to that information. And then we're finalizing this, we're getting through it. So the last couple that we would have is the additional remarks. If there is any additional commentary that you might have to leave to your internal team, you can add that here. If you have any additional links associated with this song, maybe there's a press release about a particular song that you know you wanna share or 
or associate with that record in this database, then you can add that information here to your links property. And then right here, this shows the year that the song was released. This is a formula property and it's just basing this based on the release date. On the far right, we have the conceived and the edited dates. So created date and the edited date. However, just before that, we have the splice assets or I mean, you can call this sample assets if you're not necessarily using splice. However, I like this property because it allows me to embed any assets or a folder or link to any of the sounds or samples that I might have used on this particular track. And that just helps me when it comes to remembering any particular sound or maybe I want to go back in and work with a similar set of instrumentation or a similar set of samples to work on a future song or another version of this track. I'll always be able to reference that information here with this property. So that's the breakdown on all of the properties of this records database. There's 36 in total. And on the next video, we're going to break it down separately, the actual template page for the records inside of this database and any of these views that you see up here. So I hope that helps. I hope you're looking forward to that next one. And yeah, until next time, y'all. Peace. and blessings, peace and blessings.